It's TK Friday, and today on The Joy of Editing, this is part two of my Blend If Deep Dive. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, it is part two of my Blend If Deep Dive. I made notes to go along with this video. You'll find a Dropbox link in the description below the video. Go ahead and download the notes. They'll be a great resource guide for you. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. Thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Last week, I took a deep dive into Blendif mask creation, and you click this button on the multi-mask panel, and you'll enter into Blendif but this is for creating a mask that you can put on a layer. But you can also, rather than using a mask on a layer, if you hold your shift key down and click on these adjustment layer options, you could output any one of those adjustments with Blend If on the layer and not as a layer mask, which saves you a little bit of file space when you do that. Plus it lets you go back and readjust things if needed. I'll close this Blend If panel by clicking the X. And now we're going to work today with Edit Blend If, and that is Blend If on the layers. So to get to it, we click this button right here on the multi mask panel. Now let's say you started out with the first Blend If option to generate a mask, but you decided to send it out as Blend If on the layers. You can always open up this panel and readjust your adjustments. Now I want you to notice with Edit Blend If, there is no adjustment made for you when you click and open up this panel. And notice right here, I have this curves layer for darkening. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Basically all it is, is a curves adjustment in the multiply blend mode. Let me go ahead and click on say like darks one. And you can see how it's only targeting darks one. Or if I click on darks two, you can see what's happening. Now notice up here, you see the double arrow here. If I click this, it's a magenta overlay. And you'll notice you can see the areas that I'm targeting with that darks three blend if. Now let me go to darks four. And now we can see I'm targeting those areas. Now I can toggle this off by clicking it again. And now if I shut this layer off, here's the before. And now here is the after. A note about the overlay, you can change this color. If you hold your command or control key down and click on the double arrow, a color picker comes up. So I could come here and click in the green area here and click OK. And now notice that the overlay is in green and the gradient bar shows the area being selected in green. Now, right now, you still see magenta around four. But if I click on three, now that changes green as well. Now, let me go back to four. And now if I click the double arrow here, now we can see that in green. So if magenta is not your color, you can change it to pretty much any color that you want. But I really like this overlay toggle because it's a good way of seeing where you're targeting. So now let me go down to say like darks five. And don't forget, we can also move these handles around and readjust things here. So that is really cool. In last week's video, I went over the luminosity buttons, the zone buttons. We covered some of the adjustments that we can do here. We'll be getting into more of that today. I'm going to go deeper into how these adjustment handles work with these sliders for highlights and shadows. Now with the Edit Blend If panel, we have extra buttons here like No Darks 1, No Darks 2, and so on. And we can save out presets. I'll get into all this as well as targeting certain colors, excluding colors, and what's this trash can all about? And what's this reset button all about? We'll be getting into all that today, as well as this slider here. Hmm, what is this slider all about? And then at the end of this video, I'll give you some info on the benefits of Edit Blend If. I'll also give you info on the benefits of Blend If mask creation. But I'll save that for the end of the video. I'm going to shut off my overlay by clicking the button that toggles it off. And now I have this curves darkening layer in the multiply blend mode. So if I shut this off, there's the before and there's the after. So there's my adjustment just to darken up some of the darker tones. Now let's move up to this next adjustment layer. I'll click on it to make it active. This is a curves adjustment layer that I'm using for lightening. 
Let me go ahead and turn it on. It is basically a curves adjustment layer in the screen blend mode, so it's very bright. Now, I want to point your attention to this button. You can use this button to pick a target zone. Think zone mask, like the regular zone masks in the TK9 multi-mask panel. We have that in Blend If. We have it in Edit Blend If as well as the other Blend If panel for mask creation. Let's click this button. It lets us pick a zone of the image. Say like I wanted to lighten these lighter areas up right here. Now, right now, I'm in the screen blend mode, so the image is entirely light. So if I click right here, you can see that's where that zone is hitting, right here. Don't worry about the color here, because we're only worrying about the luminosity value. See the dark tone at the bottom? This would be like zero down here, and this would be like 255 up here. But we're sitting a little bit above midtones right here. But I don't think I'd be getting a real accurate measurement right here because screen blend mode is on. So let's click cancel, and let me shut this layer off. And now let me click on this zone picker button again. And now let's click this area. Say I just want to lighten these areas up a little bit, so I'll click right here. And that's where that zone hits right there. It's a little bit under midtones, more into the shadows. I'll click OK. Now, we don't notice a change on the image because remember, this curves layer in the screen blend mode is turned off. Now, let me turn it on by clicking right here. Now, we can see we're applying that to that zone. We can turn our overlay on by clicking on this button right here, and we can see the area that we are targeting. Now, I have these adjustment handles here. So I'm gonna take this top highlight handle and drag it into the left a little bit. Somewhere right around here, I'll take the bottom shadow handle and drag it into the right just a little bit, just to tighten it up a little bit more, somewhere around there. Now I can feather this by taking this bottom highlight handle and dragging it to the left a little bit, and taking the top shadow handle and dragging it a little bit to the right, I can feather that a little bit. Now it's getting up into my sky, but I can take care of that with a mask. Now, let me toggle off this overlay by clicking on the double arrow button, and now we can see how we're affecting the area that I'm targeting. Now, it's way too strong, so let's come to Opacity, and I like to drag the Opacity slider the whole way off, and then just build it up slowly, and just add the amount of lightning I want, and I think maybe right about here at like 20%, let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after before and after. Now it's affecting this cloud up here in the sky, this darker cloud. We can use the layer mask to paint that off. So click on the black brush button to get a black brush. And then make sure your layer mask is active by clicking on it. And then with a black brush at 100% opacity, I can just paint that adjustment right off that shadow area in the cloud. You see right there? So now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Another benefit of Edit Blend If is we also get a layer mask. So we have Blend If on the layers, and we also have a layer mask if we want to paint something off if we don't need it. Now let me go back to this layer where I darkened. I'll click on it to make it active because I forgot to adjust this one. So I'm gonna take this opacity the whole way off and now I'll just build this one up slowly because I think I have it way too dark. Maybe right about here. So let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. And now here is my lightning layer. Here's before and here's after. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this top layer to make it active. Now let's talk about the handles that we have for Edit Blend If. What all can we do with these? Because there's a lot of different things you need to know about them. And what I'll show you now also applies to the other Blend If mask creation panel. And by the way, this X, when you click on it, closes the Edit Blend If. Nothing changes here, but also notice, anytime you have an Edit Blend If layer, you're gonna have these little symbols letting you know that you have Edit Blend If on them. Oh, and also, let me go ahead and turn Edit Blend If back on. You see these sliders right here? If I double click on this layer, like right about this area right here, layer style comes up, and you'll notice that these handles correspond to the underlying layer right here. So they're exactly at the same positions. I just wanted to point that out. Let me click Cancel now, and let me X out of here. I'll add another adjustment layer. This time, let's, just for the heck of it, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use a brightness contrast adjustment, so I'll click on that, there it is right there. And now I'll click on my Edit Blend Diff button because I wanna show you how these handles work. We're gonna 
not really get into adjustments here, but I want to show you the different ways we can adjust these handles when we're adjusting blend diff. And what I'm showing you here in edit blend diff also holds true for the other blend diff panel for blend diff mask creation. I'll start by clicking on Midtones 3, and the reason I'm doing it is because the top shadow handle, the bottom highlight handle are lined up together, and for teaching purposes, this is good. So you'll see what I mean here in a sec. Now the first thing is we can click on any handle and drag. Now notice when I click, you see some numbers come up here. For instance, 128 and 255. The top highlight handle right now is at position 255 as I click and drag, notice that number changes there, okay? The right side number is now at 196. Now when I release the click, it's right there. Now I can click and drag it back to 255. And that goes for any handle. Here's this shadow handle. I'm gonna click it. Right now it's at position zero, and as I move it over, now it's at position 77. And of course I can click it again and drag it back to the zero position. So that's one thing you can do. And you can click the top shadow slider and move it, the bottom highlight slider and move it, and you'll notice the gradient bar here. The green areas show you the areas that are selected right now. When I click on the bottom shadow handle, you'll notice it's at position zero, so that is zero on the luminosity range, and if I click on the top highlight handle, it's at 255. Zero meaning pure black with no detail, 255 pure white with no detail, and then all the luminosity values in between. Now notice, I'm gonna to start to drag this top highlight handle to the left, and notice when I get to this point what happens. So I'm dragging it to the left, and as soon as I hit the bottom highlight handle, they both start to move together, do you see that? And now if I move this top handle to the right, I can add feathering in. So notice when it's like right here, you see that straight line there, that means there's no feathering right there. So if I click in this top handle and I move it to the right, now I'm adding feathering there. So that's a good way of adjusting. So you can move a handle to a point that you like. Once they meet, move it the opposite direction and add some feathering in. And that works with shadows as well as highlights. So let me take this bottom shadow handle and I'll start to drag it to the right till it hits the top shadow handle. Now they start moving together. And now notice that straight line, meaning no feathering. So now as I'm moving here and I get to the point where I want, now I can move it in the opposite direction. And now I can add feathering in there. You see right there? And then this area right in here is the area that is selected at this point. And now let me click on the overlay so you can see. See the green areas? Those are the areas that are selected. And remember, you can command or control click this and let's change this back to magenta. I think we'll be able to see that a little bit better. I'll click OK. And now we can see in magenta, the magenta areas are the areas selected by that adjustment. I'll click on mids three again and note the position of the handles. Now here's another thing you can do. Command or control click on any handle you want. For instance, on this bottom highlight handle, I'm gonna hold my command or control key down and drag. Notice how the two handles move together for highlights, you see that? I can go forward or reverse. So that is something you can do. And I can do the same thing with shadows. So I'll command or control click on the shadow handle and keep holding that down and I'll move this to the right and see how they move together. And then I can move it back to the left. Now again, the same thing holds true for both handles. If I click on the top shadow handle, hold my command or control key down and drag, see how they both move together. So it doesn't matter which handle you are using. They will both move together but only if you hold the command or control key down and start to drag the handle. If you wanna shut off Edit Blend Diff, you see this checkbox is checked on for gray, click it to uncheck it. And now we can see our image turns to magenta, meaning the entire image is selected. I'll shut off the overlay by clicking the overlay toggle. And now you can see I have no Edit Blend Diff on this layer because you don't see any symbol here. And you can see the position of these sliders for no blend if. Now let's turn our attention to the highlight adjustment. If I click on the top handle and start to drag, both sliders will move together. So this is a good way of making an adjustment. Say I wanted to cut out certain amount of highlights. 
like right in this position here. Let me go ahead and turn on my overlay so we can see the area that I'm targeting. But once I find the position I want, they're both moving together, I can move this top handle in the opposite direction and apply feathering. You see that? And see how nicely that gets feathered there? Now let me go ahead and pull this slider back. They both move together when I click and drag the top handle, but if I click and drag the bottom handle, only the bottom handle moves. Do you see that? And you can see where I'm selecting. So I'm dropping out all of these light tones in here. So let me drag this back. And the same holds true with the shadow slider. If I move the bottom shadow slider, they'll both move together. And so I find a point I like, and now I can move the bottom slider to the left to add feathering to that adjustment, just like that. Now I'll take the top slider and I'll move it back. Now let me point something out to you. Let me go to the top shadow handle. I'm going to click and drag this to the right. Now remember, only it'll move because it's on the top. As I move it, you don't see anything changing in the overlay, correct? You won't see it until you release the left click of your mouse, and then you'll see the adjustment. So in other words, when you click and drag, you don't see anything happen until you release the click of your mouse. So that's kind of important to remember. I'm going to go ahead and click on this handle again and drag it the whole way to the left. And now I'll shut off this overlay. Now here's something important to note. Any one of these handles, you don't have to click and drag them. If you look at my notes, I point this out in my notes, there's like a thin light gray line that goes across here, which I'm representing in blue on my notes. I drew where the lines hit. And basically what that means is you can just like click. See like on this bottom highlight handle, if I click right here, that handle will move right there. If I click here, it'll move here. Same with, uh, the shadows, if I click on the bottom handle and click here or here, and you'll notice they're both moving together. But now if I click on the bottom and move this back, now you can see that feathering there. But you can just click, or you could click and drag, whichever you want. And remember, if you want to shut your blend if off, just uncheck the gray checkbox. I'm pretty sure I covered everything I wanted to cover on moving around the handles. Now let's move on to something else. These buttons across here, no darks one, no darks two, no midtones one, no midtones two, no lights one, no lights two. These are buttons that you've seen me use on TK Fridays when I'm doing full edits. I don't use uh, no midtones one or midtones two, so I'm not even going to go over those. It just cuts out midtones one and midtones two. But, however, I do like to use no darks one, no darks two, and no lights one and no lights two, especially with vignettes. Now, I have a vignette on this image, and I made it really strong. I'm going to shut this layer off so you can see it. There's before and there's after. This is a stronger vignette than I would normally use. Here is where these buttons come into play. If I wanted to protect my darkest tones in this vignette area here, they're getting really dark. But notice when I click on No Darks 1, you notice how they are not getting as much vignette on them. Now watch down here again as I click on No Darks 2. But notice when I click on No Darks 2, No Darks 1 is unselected. You can use any of these buttons, but you can only use one at a time. But let's say, for instance, see the highlight areas up here? If they were getting toned down too much by that vignette, I may want to say no lights one. So let me click on no lights one. Look up in this area here. When I click on no lights one, notice how this area lightens up because I'm protecting lights one from getting any vignette. But notice, No Darks 2 is no longer selected. But what if I wanted it? Let me click on No Darks 2, and you'll notice No Lights 1 gets shut off. But now, if I click on this bottom handle, see my number? That number is 20, and the top handle is 100. So remember that. Let's click on no lights one. Now I can simply click on the top handle and drag it to the right until I hit 100. And we'll leave it there and I'll take the bottom handle and I'll drag it to the right until I hit 20. Because those were the numbers for No Darks 2. And when I clicked on No Darks 2, I just clicked on one of the handles and got those values. So that's how I determined that. And now I have No Darks 2 and no lights one. And if I shut off this vignette layer, you can see there's before and there's after. Now, you can only click one of these buttons at a time. So what I can do is you see this button right here? You're gonna love this. This is for presets. 
So I'm going to click this button. You click the plus to add a preset. So I'll click plus to add a preset. Now remember that preset has no darks two and no lights one as a part of it. So let's click right here in this field and give it a name. No darks two, no lights one and click OK. And now you'll notice I have a couple other presets in here. I have a no darks one and a no lights one, no darks two and a no lights two. And now I have this new one, no darks two, no lights one, which is the one I'll be using. But let me click on this one, no darks one and no lights one. But that's not the one I really want. Now I could come back to the presets by clicking this button. And now I really want this one, no darks two, no lights one. So we'll click on it and there it is. And as you can see, a blend if preset can really help you out, especially for something like this, where I cannot have a no lights one and a no darks two, but I can manually create that and then save that out as a preset. Now let me click on presets again. And if you want to eliminate a preset, I don't want to get rid of any of these, but let me click on negative because you'll notice you get this message comes up, how to remove a preset, do this. Hold down the shift key and click on the name of the preset in the list you want to remove. And then I'll just click OK here. Nothing happens. But to get rid of a preset, hold your shift key down and click on any one of the presets and they go away. And then when you're done, click the X to get you back to the edit blend if panel. Now pay close attention because let's say you've created presets in edit blend if or say in the color grading tool, you've created presets. It's a good idea to come up to the multi mask panel fly out menu. I call it a hamburger menu. Click on this and come down and click on backup user data. Click on that. Your file browser opens up. Pick a location you want to store this backup information to and save it out. And then if for some reason you lose all that information, you could always come back here to the fly out menu and come down to restore user data. Click on that. Point your file browser to where your files are at and then restore all that information back. And like the old saying goes, it's better to be safe than sorry. And next up, let's look at target and exclude. We'll start out with target. So what we're going to do here is what I want to do is add a new adjustment layer. So let's X out of edit blend if, and let me click on the curves adjustment button to add a curves layer. Let's put it in the screen blend mode that lightens the entire image. Now I know it looks bad, but let's go with this because I'm going to show you how target works. So now let's click on the edit blend if button. And now I want to target a color. So I'll click on the target checkbox and nothing happens right now. You see these different colors here. We can target a certain color. Let's say I only want to target green colors. So if I click on this green checkbox, you'll notice I'm only lightening up the green colors. So let me shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here's before and here's the after. Now edit blend diff lets us choose two adjacent colors. They have to be adjacent and you can only choose two. So for instance, I can click on the yellow checkbox and add yellow to this blend if adjustment. Now when I shut this layer off, there's before and there's after. So now I'm choosing yellow and green. Let me uncheck both of these colors. And now what if I only wanted red colors? I'll click on the red checkbox. I'm only getting red. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Now the adjacent color to red would be this color over here, magenta or yellow. I'm going to click on magenta and it adds anything that had magenta color in it gets lightened up as well. Let me uncheck these two. Now what if I wanted to target blue and cyan so I could check on blue and now I'll check on cyan and you can see it's affecting the area up here in the sky. So let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Now this slider comes into play too. This is the adjustment expansion slider. So when you move this to the right, more of the adjustment gets revealed over the entire image as I move this slider to the right. See how the rest of the image starts lightening up and I can go the whole way over here to the right and really bring a lot more of that image in. So that can help you fine tune your adjustment, but that is target. Now let me go ahead and uncheck these two boxes and uncheck target. And now let's check out exclude. I'll click on the exclude checkbox and nothing happens. Now you have as many color choices here as you want and you'll exclude the color when you check on a color box. For instance, if I click on green, I'll be excluding greens from the adjustment. 
If I click on yellow, I'll exclude yellow. I'll get everything but green and yellow. And if I don't want red, I can exclude red. But you can choose as many of these as you want. And then just like target, the adjustment expansion slider, when you move it to the right, more adjustment gets revealed as the sliders move to the right. So see, as I move it to the right, more of the adjustment gets revealed over the entire image. And that is exclude. I'm going to go ahead and shut this layer off and go back to the vignette layer. And let me show you something here if you want to shut off your edit blend if see where it says gray there's a checkbox here if i click this and uncheck it you can see what it looks like without edit blend if and if i check this back on you can see what it looks like with edit blend if now take note i am on the vignette layer and this symbol lets me know that i'm using blend if on that layer and when i uncheck the gray you notice that symbol goes away because there is no blend if on that layer. When I click this back on, the symbol comes back. And I just have two final things to show you, this button here and this button here. I'm still on this vignette layer and you notice there is my no darks two and no lights one on there. But say I come here and I start playing around with this highlight handle and I get this all out of whack. What if I wanna reset it? If I click on this button, which is a reset button, it will reset the Edit Blend If back to the way it was when I opened Edit Blend If on this layer. So let me click this button and see it went right back to the No Darks 2, No Lights 1. So that's what that one does. It doesn't totally reset it, but it resets it back to where it was when you opened Edit Blend If up for this layer. Let's say I was on this curves adjustment layer and then I decided, well, maybe I could get a little bit better blend if adjustment on this vignette layer. So I click on the vignette layer and I, you know, I come up here and I start playing around, but yet I'm not happy with what I'm getting. And I say, shoot, I just want to go back to where I was. Let's say I move this adjustment handle on this one and all I have to do is click this reset button. The blend if settings get reset to when the blend if first opened up in this layer. And I think that is a really great feature. Let me know what you think about that one in the comment section below. I think that is super useful. And now for the final button, the trash can. Now what's this all about? Now I just set this up to show you. I have blend if adjustments up here. You can see on the highlight and shadow sliders as well as I'm excluding yellow, green, and red. This trash can will just reset the entire edit blend if panel. So I'll click this and everything just gets reset as if there's no blend if whatsoever. And now in closing, I wanted to share with you the benefits of using edit blend if on layers, which is the first category and the second category, blend if mask benefits when you're using blend if to create a layer mask. You might want to pause the video because the information is on the screen for you. And you'll also find this very same information on your notes because I know a lot of you in comments ask, when should I use like luminosity masks and zone masks and color masks? And what is the benefit of using edit blend if creating masks or using it on layers. I myself generally use it on layers. I find that's where I get the most benefit out of it, but that's just me. We're all different. Well, there it is, everyone. This concludes my Edit Blend If Deep Dive. This was part two. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it at the end of this video. Go back and watch it. Don't forget to download the PDF notes for part one and part two. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.